to Time Out right here on TVMB. In the next 30 minutes, we'll be talking about the Flames roller coaster ride. The curling world mourns the loss of a great, and Russ Howard is one and one at the Briar. And a good Monday evening. Welcome to Time Out right here on TV MB. I'm Barry Johnson along with Bruce McDonald. Bruce, nice to have you in here tonight. Good to be back, uh, Barry. I'm sitting in here for Jim Hennessy who uh, is taking a two-week vacation, which is, I think, well-deserved. Yeah, Jim's, uh, Jim's a busy guy and he, he deserves a couple weeks off, for sure. Let's start off right away, Bruce, with the Flames. Their uh, roller coaster ride seems to continue here. Um, they seem to maybe have a steady goaltender in Mateel. Jaguar's not happy and mm -hmm. uh, he's uh, voicing some of his opinions. Yeah, that's right. I mean, they, they had the long... Homestand came to an end on Saturday night. They were 5-4, 2-1 on the homestand, which is, isn't bad when you think about it, but really could have been better. They could have moved out ahead of Quebec and Lowell with a, with a really good homestand. Uh, I guess the, uh, when you talk about that homestand, the main thing, of course, has been the goaltending, and it's been very inconsistent over the last month, and all us regular fans were hoping with Jaguar back that would change, of course. Friday night he goes in, and uh, he actually looked good for the first part of the game, and then... Uh, the team let him down a bit, and he let in a couple of soft ones, and uh, he was he was pulled, and uh, and Mateel went in and did a good job in that game, of course, and then he played great. Saturday night was the first star. It seemed to be a goaltender's uh, duo on Saturday night mm -hmm. between Mateel and, uh, you can't call him the veteran, but he's also mm -hmm. a rookie, too, in Loango, but he's yes. got some NHL experience under his belt, so yes. it, it appeared to be a very good game. It was unfortunate for Mateel, Mateel to lose in overtime in that game against Quebec, but uh, yeah. to get a 2-2 draw the next night is mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty good for yeah, a rookie. That was really a goaltender's battle on Saturday evening. Uh, I was happy to see Leon go back there, actually, even though he did come back and haunt us a bit, but it was a surprise to see him down from the Islanders. Actually, we figured when Pop Van was traded, he'd be up there for the year. Of course, they picked up Kevin Weeks, and he managed to take the number one job up there, so I guess they're thinking the same way with him as, as Calgary's think, thinking with Jaguar. They'll have him down here and play a lot and take their teams into the playoffs. Saturday night was also, um, like you say, it was a good goaltender's duo that night. Uh, Luongo, who can put on a real good show. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Flames were leading the game going into the third period by a score of 2-1. to one. And a lot of people thought, well, you know, they, they got the icing on the cake here, but Lowell come back and scored a goal late in the third period. Yeah, yeah. Well, once again, I mean, uh, the bottom line is I think the Flames have to be happy to take that point. I mean, they were outshot, I think it was around 46-35 to 35 range in the game. First star was Mateel, and he played a great game. Let's give him credit, too. I mean, uh, and I think that they'll take that point. As we're filming on Sunday this week, we don't know the outcome of the game in Quebec City yet, but we're hoping to pick up a victory there. I mean, they've been few and far between against that team and, and try to pull back in the first place. We've got a clip of Saturday night's game, actually, uh, between the Lowell Lock Monsters and the St. John Flames, and we'll go to that right now. Picks it up in the right corner, centers Botter all alone, shot Luongo the save, and he will cover up. Puck kept in at the St. John line, alone in front, Nabokov, shot, save, McKeel. That one is knocked away by Nabokov, he's in behind Rocky Thompson, pounded all the way, he loses the puck, there's a shot, they score! Dave Heimovich was the trailer, and I believe he forces it past McKeel. Hit Bejan just rocked Peter Hogan, and now we've got a fight. Bejan dropping the gloves with Greg Phillips, and Bejan is just punishing him. Spun him around and just hammered him with a right, and then wrestles him to the ice. Kachuk has the puck, looking for Fata in front. It comes to the point. Sorokin, wrist shot, big glove saved by Luongo. He loses it, and they score. Trip. We'll flip it to the line. McIsaac, great job to hold in in front. All alone. Phillips dishes off. Big sprawling save by Mateel on Vladimir Orsog. Flames from right to left. 1 1 is the score. Kachuk for Fata down the left wing. Shot. That one took Loango square in the face mask and he's shaking up. A laser by Fata. 
And Longo is shaking up as he took that one square in the face. Bejan moves it for Shelley. McIsaac took it away. He gets double teamed. Now Shelley and McIsaac are going to have words. They're going to drop the gloves. Shelley and McIsaac with heavy right hands. And Shelley seemed to land a good one that had McIsaac dropping his head. Here's Korolev bringing over the line. He fans on his shot, and then he pays the price as Sorokin roughs him up. And now they're going to drop the gloves, and Korolev is going to get fed by Lee Sorokin. Korolev's jersey came up, and then he seemed to knock Sorokin down, but Sorokin landed the majority of the punches early in that fight with Korolev. A couple of fights in this game, earlier when it was Beijing battling Phillips, it looked like Beijing landed the majority of the shots, but he took one that cut him. They're under a minute to go in the period. Padol in top of the left circle. Jason Padol in the former Leaf, 42 goals in this league last season. Loses it, gets it back for Sharon in front. Brennan the shot, Mateel got a piece of it after Phillips had set up the screen in front. Raton on the left wing boards. In behind the net, Benoit Raton. Hooked to the ice, there's going to be a penalty. Thompson gives it to St. Croix, shot, that one's wide. Raton got hammered again. And now play is stopped and there could very well be two penalties here. We'll see if Warren has the intestinal fortitude to call a vote. And evidently he doesn't. 1-1 one, one is the score. Sharon won the faceoff, but Kachuk gets it to the point. Shep tacks to Petrovicki. Shot goal! Ronald Petrovicki blows that one past Roberto Luongo. It's a power play goal, and the plane leads 2-1. Racing after it is Thompson. Chartrand got there ahead of him. Drops it to Sheridan. Derek. Shot scared away by Mateel. over the low line on left wing. Breton giving it to Varlamov with a shot, kicked out, rebound, Shepnack, big save by Luongo, Shepnack body and scored, but Luongo makes a game-saving stop on a bullet by Shepnack. Huge save by Luongo, Shepnack thought for sure that that was in the net and that this game was over. Plays it in behind the goal, Kachuk with three seconds left, Kachuk centers, Staples with the backhand, Luongo made the save, but the game had finished up uh, your longest home stay. You're going on the road, but uh, on your long road trip here, you're going to have to uh, come up against the trade deadline. Uh, do you have any uncertainty about players coming home again here after that deadline? Well, that's not my my job uh, to make those deals. Uh, I mean, you look at uh, what we have, and, and uh, we need improvement. There's no question. Uh, there are some question marks as to players coming back, whether they'll be back or not in Calgary, uh, which always affects us. And, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, there's there's probably a better than average chance, I'm sure, that something will happen before the deadline, yes. Um, John Sebastian Chavier, not dressed for tonight's game. Uh, do you have any discussion with him after last night's performance? Yeah, we talked about it last night. Um, basically, I think he knows that I wasn't overly happy with the performance. and. Um, he wasn't dressed tonight. Uh, we'll probably have to talk about it tomorrow. He's going to back up tomorrow night. He won't get the, the starting uh, job in Quebec. And I think that just that's, has a lot to do with the fact that he has not had a whole lot of success against that franchise uh, in the last uh, year and a bit. How do you feel about uh, this long home stay? Do you feel you like you came out like you wanted to? No, well, I think we, we, we kind of salvaged something, I think, at the end of it. I mean, I think we, we came through at the latter stages of the, of the homestand and, and grabbed some points and played some pretty good hockey and some real gutsy efforts. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, we started the homestand, and when we started the homestand, we kind of got uh, decimated by call-ups and, and injuries, and, uh, and that hurt us at the beginning. And then... Uh, we started getting a few guys back and healthy, and uh, we had some good efforts, and, and we're able to uh, salvage something at the end of the the, the uh, homestand. Okay. Good luck with the road. Rick. And thank you very much for that clip.
the Flames, obviously, a uh, little dissension amongst the ranks. Jaguar's not happy. He's not getting the start in Quebec also, as we heard Rick Vive say. But they they got a pretty good team right there now. If you look at what they have, there's basically an East Coast League team is what they have right there now. Yeah, yeah. And also, we've, we've probably got about three or four guys that should come back down from Calgary. I mean, Cowan should be back and Scoville and Chiron for sure. And then there's talk, too, that St. Louis could eventually end up here before playoff time. I, I'll believe that when I see it myself. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, for what they have right now, the team is starting to come together. And uh, to be honest, I think if they can get the goaltending, that's a key, of course. We said that over and over again. But if they get the goaltending, they can still certainly come out of this division. Must not forget also the uh, trade deadline's coming up very soon. Uh, I think the 17th March, of March, March 14th or 17th, 14th or 17th yeah. somewhere yeah. in that area. There's going to be a lot of changes. I think you're going to mm -hmm. see a lot of trades going on. Uh, yes. To see St. Louis come back to St. John after the trading deadline, I'll be surprised personally, yeah, yeah. and uh, we, we could see a lot of changes and a lot of shakeups there. But we, we uh, certainly could. let's change gears here quickly, uh, Bruce. The local junior mm. B teams in the you know in the surrounding area here, Sussex and St. John. You were with St. John. I was with Sussex. Yeah. Um, our team got beat out Wednesday night. Uh, went down three straight against Woodstock. Mm -hmm. Let's hear a little bit from your side of uh, the St. John team and how they did. Well, basically going into the playoffs, we felt like uh, we came up against an opponent that, that we could play with, Stanley, and. Uh, we lost three straight as well, and then we lost 6-3 with an open net goal in the first game. We lost 5-4 in overtime in the second one, a game we should have won. Then we lost 4-3 and a good effort in the third one. So, you know, we, we did lose three straight, but we weren't totally disappointed in our effort in those three games. And uh, to be honest, we felt like if we could beat Stanley, that would be maybe as far as we could go with the, with the team we had this year. It was a building year for us, and we're hoping next year to improve and maybe battle with the big guys next year. Well, I guess it's pretty near the same on our end yeah. with Sussex. Uh, we yeah. went down three straight to yeah. uh, Woodstock, yeah. and uh, the first game was 3-2. The second one, I think, was 6-1, and mm -hmm. the third one was 6-4, I believe. Yes. And uh, we, we also thought we could beat uh, Woodstock, but mm -hmm. uh, they just come up big when they needed to. And uh, unfortunately for us, we had no practice time. Oh, and, yeah. uh, you know, you. we were only a 40-minute team, and, and as we know, hockey's a 60-minute game, and yeah. uh, the third period killed us in every game we played against them. So. Exactly, uh, yeah. But uh, we, we had a pretty good year. There was a lot of on and off, on and off ice stuff that went on behind the scenes. And yeah. uh, right up till the, I think the final buzzer went off, I think there was still some bickering going on between the two. And, uh, oh, but uh, in the end, uh, nobody came out a winner, I don't think. And no. uh, hopefully it's a learning lesson for both sides. Well, that's right. Hopefully the next year this will all be behind us. We don't have to worry about it. Sussex and St. John can both build their teams up next year. And maybe next year we'll battle in the final. And having said that, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we will talk about curling, the Lavat Briar going on in Saskatchewan, and the loss of a great curling uh, legend. legend, I guess you could say, uh, Sandra Smirler uh, succumbs to cancer when we come right back. Welcome back to Time Out right here on TVMB. I'm Barry Johnson along with Bruce McDonald. Bruce, um, high school hockey, that's your, uh, or was, I guess, your forte at one point in time. Uh, yeah, it was. I, I haven't followed it. We'll let you... Uh... Okay, and the, the leagues are done now. We're in the AAA Southwest League. We're into their semifinals. We have some good hockey going on between uh, Fredericton High School and Hampton High School in one series, and Armocto High School and KV in the other. So... Uh, so get out and support your teams in your areas in, in those series. As well in the AA League, we right now are down to our semifinals as well. We have St. Stephen High School playing Funday. Presently, St. Stephen leads the best of five, series two to one. And Minto leads Rossi High School, and a bit of a surprise to some people, two one in their best of uh, five series. So lots of high school hockey still to be played. Get out and support your teams. Let's go back to AAA Hampton. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
mean, a few years ago, Hampton was really, you know, the lower rung team, and all of a sudden they seem to be coming around here as of late, and they're going on against the big. Uh, Fredericton's always been the big one, yeah. I think, back from when I was in high school, and this is going on 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. So Fredericton's always been the big contender, and uh, yes. how do you think they're going to fare against Fredericton? It's going to be tough against Fredericton. Uh, Hampton moved up this year to play in a Triple A league, and they have to, in order to go on provincials this year, they have to go as a Triple A school, which is going to be very interesting. I mean, right up to now, they've been Double A school, and they've they've done quite well in in provincial playdowns. I guess basically we're going to see what they're made of this year. Now, to me, it, it would be a big surprise if they beat Fredericton. However, they seem to once again be the powerhouse that league. Uh, the, the the records were pretty close between the four surviving teams, but I guess if you want a prediction from me, it's going to be Fredericton. Against I, I, and I can see KV knocking off Armando, but I'm, I'm going to say no. It's going to be Armando Fredericton again this year. So it's going to be uh, a big battle in the capital up there, I so think, to speak. I, I mean, Armando so. just outside of the capital, mm -hmm. but uh, that'll be a good series to watch up there. If yes. anybody who's liking high school hockey, I think that's where I would like to go and it uh, would be, yes. and watch KV or uh, sorry Fredericton against Armando. Yeah. But uh, yeah. let's uh, quickly change gears here now to. Uh, Curling, yes. the uh, curling, uh, the Black Briar going on out in Saskatchewan. Uh, we had Dave McLean of one of the local newspapers mm. go out on a limb and say New Brunswick and Alberta mm. in a final. Wow. Uh, we were talking off camera, and you said, no, you didn't like that prediction at all. No, well, you have your defending champ there, um, Stoughton from Manitoba, and he's off to a good start again this year. And, and of course, you have Russ Howard with all his experience, but he's playing with three guys that don't have the experience, really. I'm not saying they're not good, good curlers. They have. They are good curlers, and they have been there before, but... I mean, you have Russ Howard with his 10 years under his belt, 76 wins as a skip the all-time record. But if I was projecting things, I'd have to go with Kevin Martin of Alberta against Stoughton of Manitoba in the final. Well, Howard's off to a pretty good start right now at 1-1. One and one. Mm -hmm. uh, He lost to Alberta, mm -hmm. and uh, his only win was coming against Northern Ontario. Yes. And uh, unfortunately, at the time of this taping, we're not going to know the result. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe he plays Nova Scotia on Monday, and mm -hmm. we're not going to know the result of that. But uh, I think overall, the Briar is... It's, in the early going, we can always say it's up for grabs, but yes. uh, you always have your favorites. Uh, after seeing Jeff Stoughton here last year, you, you kind of got to like that guy. Oh, your, yes. your hands-on favorite. Yes. I mean, uh, Howard, the veteran, you know, he mm -hmm. goes there, he does his thing, and, uh, you know, he puts on a bit of a show. Yes. But he's always, I think, about the ninth end type of guy where mm -hmm. he pulls out the dramatics. Yes. And uh, for any time I've ever seen him, I've enjoyed watching him. Mm -hmm. uh, forget the first four or five ends. Get down to the seventh, eighth, and ninth end and watch yeah. Russ Howard do his, do his thing. Not only that this year, I think you're going to see these three teams especially come to the forefront. I've watched the first couple of draws on the ice. It's been very hard to read so far, and I think you're going to see your veteran skips um, calm their teams down and settle that quicker than the, than the young guys. So I think you're going to see, once again, those three teams battling it out and Manitoba and uh, Alberta in the final. Okay, we're going to have to go, and uh, I hate to go to this, but we're going to have to with Sandra Smurler, mm -hmm. three-time Canadian champion, three-time world champion, yeah. one-time Olympic gold medalist. Yes. Uh, can you say much more about Sandra Smurler? No, and it was a bit of a shock to me when I heard it. I mean, I follow curling like I follow all sports, I mean, quite closely, actually. And uh, when when we heard back uh, several months ago that she had cancer, it was a shock to everybody. And then I thought she was coming around and starting to beat it. And she looked pretty good in yeah, Moncton at the juniors yeah. down there. She looked she was like there, she was She'd been coming. traveling. She was talking about getting back with her team in the fall and start doing some competitive curling again. And then all of a sudden, we got the report a few days ago that she had passed away from cancer. And it was a big shock, really. I mean, a surprise, I guess. The people that were close to her, it wasn't. I heard Vic Ryder talk on TSN. He said it wasn't a surprise to them at all. They knew how serious it was, but I guess to the, the rest of us that weren't that close, it was a bit of a shock, for sure. Apparently, uh, yeah. through the rumors, I mean, we, we'll hear a lot, but uh, they're not all negative or anything, but she refused to take chemo treatments Is that right? to save her unborn baby at the time. I she see. wanted to uh, have the baby born and uh, and whatnot, eh? and which, that, that's quite a sacrifice. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, that, that leaves behind uh, oh, yes. A nice thing for her husband, and uh, yeah. she leaves behind two children and uh, her husband. And uh, anybody who wants to make a, a donation to uh, the, can the Cancer Society, make it in memory of Candace Merler, and uh, just check out the, the curling website at TSN, and uh, they can give you the information there because yes. there's a little spot where you can click on. And uh, our uh, sympathies go out to the family, and uh, like I say, the, the world curling the world of curling. audience has yeah. lost a, a, a great competitor, and uh, she'll be sadly missed yes. here. Yes. Let's just go to hockey once again. Okay. Up Highway Number Seven, we got uh, Fredericton in the University uh, A A U C I A U, hmm. I guess in the A U A A uh, yep. ranks down here, going against Acadia. Yes. Uh, we've seen that what two years ago? Those two battled out, and uh, UMB went on to win the uh, national crown. Yeah, and actually a few years back, when was it 98 or 97? UMB beat Acadia in the national final too. So those two teams are are quite 
you know they're they're aware of each other and uh, and to be honest so I think it was a surprise this year I've traveled down the West Coast a few times and the people down there were saying they thought St. Mary's would dispose of Acadia easily this year and it didn't happen they went to the third and deciding game and Acadia took it in overtime uh, the other side UMB and St. Thomas it was close to the final game and then UMB pulled away and beat them seven nothing um, so uh, Acadia won the first game of that series on Saturday night 4-2 and it's a best of five of course and uh, we'll see what happens now but they're in the driver's seat at this point having watched the uh, UMB and uh, St. Thomas game on TV mm -hmm. last weekend uh, at the Lady Beaverbrook in Frederick and that place was a packed house oh, yeah. and uh, it was just you know it was they were hanging from the rafters in there it was a great atmosphere in there and uh, emotions were running high in that game but uh, quickly we have to go to a uh, report from the LBR with uh, Bobby Allen on the high school league I'm joined with uh, Richard Malone the coach of the Hampton High School Huskies AAA high school hockey Richard you just swept the best of three series against St. Malachy's tough one tonight a big win for you 4-3 give us a little bit about your thoughts in this series Richard it was a lot closer series than we thought early, Bob. It was uh, like to go in two games. That we, we beat them every game this season that we played, and we thought it'd be a little bit easier than this. But two two overtime wins, we can't get any better than that. Just shows how, you know, my guys get a lot of heart to come out two overtime wins for that one. It's Ernie, a tough overtime loss. Your first two games overtime losses. Give us your little thoughts about this series, Ernie. Well, um, uh, they had our number all year. Uh, we didn't win uh, any of the four games, I don't think. In fact, I'm sure we didn't. Uh, we knew that they had uh, a tad more uh, bench strength. Uh, they were deeper than us, and we thought that we could keep it. If we, if we, we kept it close, it was, you know, was going to be either way. Uh, I thought that the game in Hampton, we could have had them. Uh, and tonight, when we came back to tie it, uh, we were just tired. Uh, I didn't have all that many guys on the bench, and, and we took some, I thought, senseless penalties, and uh, that's just the way it is. Pat Carlson played a heck of a game tonight. Give us your thoughts on Pat. Pat played a heck of a two games. He, uh, he really kept them in at this overtime period. Uh, we kept it in their zone most of the time and uh, kind of blocked up the neutral zone on them and uh, got a lot of shots, and Pat Carlson, I can't say enough about him, boys. He, he did a good job. Yes, sir. And welcome back to Time Out here on TVMB. I'm Barry Johnson along with Bruce McDonald. Bruce, in Las Vegas on Sunday, the CarsDirect.com 400 mm. was uh, raced, and they had a uh, fair amount of rain delays down there. And uh, Ricky Rudd held the pole on that, but quickly fell back to 13th. Yeah. What's your uh, pick? And I know you've uh, done some uh, wagering there, but uh, yeah, who well, were your picks? Well, like, like a lot of people know, I'm in a big pool that we did well the first couple of year, last couple of years in it. And uh, the first two races this year, we've done well, so we're sitting near the top right now. We've gone, here's my five my top five in, in the predicted order of finish and the rest of you can laugh at me probably Monday night when the real <laughs> results come out but I got Mark Martin to win, Jeff Burton second, Dale Jarrett third, Bobby Labonte fourth and Tony Stewart fifth. And of course we don't know the results right now as we're taping but when you're sitting here watching this Monday night and you see that those five guys all crashed at lap 45 <laughs> you laugh. So. Let's go back to Daytona a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, we noticed maybe a bit of a rookie mistake on Dale Earnhardt Jr. when he pulled out and oh, yes. uh, Daddy come right behind him, and Scott, I think yeah. I, I know he was kind of saying, you know, what the heck are you doing to me yeah. here? You know, what what were you trying to pull here yeah. anyway? Yeah. And uh, I think it was a rookie mistake. Well, what, and, what, uh, what, what, our, what his father said over the radio actually was, who the hell's driving that car? <laughs> exactly. And who owns it? And who owns it? Exactly. Because uh, people that aren't watching NASCAR a lot don't know that Earnhardt Sr. owns Earnhardt Jr.'s car as well. So yeah. he was a little bit upset about that, and he basically he said he just cost me the race. We don't know if that's true or not, but he might have. Because, you, you know, you're in these restrictor plate races, you get knocked out of the loop there for a short period of time, you can drop back a long ways, and that's basically what happened to Dale Sr. right there. Well, what, what happened with Dale Jr. was he tried to get out and get some people to follow him yeah. and, and uh, you know, get some tailwind going there, but yeah. uh, it didn't work, no. and, uh, and it forced uh, Earnhardt to go back, I think it was about 16th or 17th oh, at yes. one point in time. Yes. And uh, you've got to be careful when you say Earnhardt now, you got to say Earnhardt Jr., yeah. Earnhardt Sr., yes. and... Uh, and of course, Dale Jarrett went on to uh, finally win the, the Daytona. Yes. And last week, my memory slipped me here on who won, but uh, we'll let you go from there. Bruce. Last week, Bobby Labonte won in um, where the heck was it? North Carolina. North Carolina. Rockingham, North Carolina, last week, and we were able to pick the winners the first two weeks, so I'm happy with that. And uh, and he won in Rockingham, and it was his first ever win on that track. And uh, to be honest, I don't know why we picked him, but we did, and he managed to win it. Um, um, so once again, in Las Vegas to this past Sunday, um, and uh, then on. I mean, my predictions right now, I'll, and I'll go on the limb here and tell you, I mean, it's great that we get to talk about NASCAR this week because 
Jim will never let us when he's around. So, but uh, I'm going to make a prediction that Jeff Burton will win the title this year as well. And he's up there right now. He's off to a good start. And you're going to see him and Bobby Labonte and Dill Jarrett, Mark Martin, and those boys all battle up. I think Burton's got the year's experience from last year where he, where he led up to the halfway point. He's going to pull it off this year and, and take the title. Jeff Gordon, mm. where is he? Boy, that's... Well, he lost his whole crew to, uh, to Dale Jarrett. First, he lost his crew chief, who's forming a new Dodge team that comes in next year. Then in the offseason, the rest of his crew left and joined, joined Dale Jarrett's team. And uh, for anyone that doesn't realize how important that is, it's showing you right now. Because uh, as we were watching the race there yesterday, uh, during the rain delay, Gordon went in, went in and out of the pitch three or four times trying to get some changes done to his car, and they just could not get it get it worked out and find out what the problem was, and that wouldn't have happened in the last two or three years. A, cr a, a crew is basically almost like having your goaltender back there. Oh, you know yes. he's your last resort, and you know and mm -hmm. when a player's coming down that you know he's yeah. going to help you out. But uh, yeah. when he goes into the pits, he's yeah. almost got to tell them what he what he wants done and yes. what to do. Yes, exactly. And uh, I'll be honest, Jeff Gordon does not like losing, does he? And he's not going to put up with this for too long. If this team doesn't develop quickly, he'll be out searching for some new crew members. Russ Bucket Wallace. Mm. What do you think of him? What's his season going to be like? Well, you know something? Uh, every week we ever pick Rusty Wallace in our top five, he ends up crashing or finishing out at the bottom of the field. I mean, Rusty is a good racer. As long as he stays off the groundhogs, he'll be fine. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's, uh, he's, he's, in my opinion, he's sort of like the same level as Earnhardt is right now. They're, um, on certain weeks they can compete, but overall they're not going to be there at the end of the year. They'll be in the, probably in the top ten, but they're getting older. And they're just not willing to take those chances every week that Burton and Gordon and Labonte and these boys are, in my humble opinion. Let's go closer to home. The NASCAR mm -hmm. uh, circuit starts up on May 13th. 16 races this year. First one is going to be down at Scotia Speed World, I believe. Yeah. Uh, like I said, May 13th, which is going to be quite early this year. And uh, anybody who's interested in uh, following up more on NASCAR, just check the website, NASCAR.net, and uh, keep up to date on everything that's having on going on, I should say. Good, good. Bruce? 30 minutes is gone, wow. it's come and gone, and uh, it's been a pleasure, and uh, I'm going to be here again next week, and uh, hopefully you will be, and hopefully you will too, right here on Time Out on TVMB. I'm Barry Johnson for Bruce McDonald. Have a good week. Good night.